All right, guys, so this is the notes for Friday. So on this one, I think you'll find it easier. We're trying to divide a polynomial by a monomial. So all we're trying to do is the divide uh, this right here by 3. So what you do is something we actually have done in the past. When you divide two terms by just one number, what you can do is you divide each one of those terms by that number. All right, so 9y divided by 3 is just 3y. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. All right, so that's that for that. Now, on the next one is the same idea. On number 2, you're just dividing uh, this term by 4. And if you want to, you can write it separately if that makes it easier for you. Or you could even do this mostly in your head if you can. All right, so we got 16a divided by 4. That's going to be 4a. Right, and then 20 divided by 4 is going to be, excuse me, 20b divided by 4 is going to be 5b. Right, now when it gets more complicated, is the same idea though. All right, so if we have negative 27, you might want to rewrite it like this. So this is kind of a combination of what we've done in the past. All right, so we're going to divide each one of these, all right? Ne 27 divided by negative 9 is negative 3. R cubed divided by R, remember when you divide here, you subtract the exponent, so it'll be exponent, exponent of 1, so this would be R squared. Okay, and this next part you have a 2 R. Again, same idea. You have a negative 18 divided by negative 9. You get this. And finally, this would be a 4. And notice that the R's cancel here. All right, so uh, again, same idea on number 4. We're going to divide this by negative 2PQ, 2P squared Q. So again, I'm going to rewrite this. So again, I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, so give you a little time to rewrite this. So after you rewrite it, then you're dividing number with number. That would be a negative 6. P to the 4th divided by P squared. You're going to subtract those exponents. So 4 minus 2 is 2. So this would be P squared. All right, so P to the 4th divided by P squared is P squared. Q is cancel. All right, on the next one, you got negative 18 divided by negative 2. That's going to be a plus 9. And then you got p cubed divided by p squared, and that's going to be p to the first power. Right, and then finally, q squared min divided by q. This will be q to the first. Again, same idea. When you have the same base, and you subtract the exponents. And then finally, in this last one, that would be minus 9. Notice that p squares cancel because they're exactly the same. And you would end up with a q squared. All right, on, on number one, on this one right here, we're looking for the missing factor. So in, in, in essence, what we're doing, what we're doing here is we're trying to figure out what number, if you multiply times this, you get that. All right, so an example of that would be if I have a six, and I say there is some number that I don't know, what do I have to multiply this number six to get, to get a 24? What do I have to multiply that times? Well, I know hopefully that if I multiply a 6 times a 4, I get a 24, right? But also what you can do, right, if you don't know how to do this, what you can do to figure that out is you can divide both sides by 6 a squared m 7. So if I divide both of these by that, I'm going to get, I'm going to figure out what that's going to be equal to, right? So that's going to be equal to Again, I'm dividing. So that's going to be 4. A, remember, 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's A to the third power. This would be M to the second power. Okay? So that's the missing factor. The missing factor is 4A cubed M squared. All right. Now we're going to do the same. We can do the same thing on this one. All right? We'll just divide. Um, 
let's see, this one's a little bit different, but not really. I would divide both sides by 5x cubed y. I think that would be the easiest thing to do, and then you can figure out what this is. Right, I'm going to leave that one blank for you. You can do it on your own. Now, if you have something like this, what I recommend that you do first is I would probably, I would probably multiply this first. So you have negative 10 a cubed b to the fourth. Right, so I just multiply those two things together. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents. This is a to the first, b to the first. All right, and that quantity times what is equal to 30? Well, now I have the same exact problem. If I divide both sides by this, okay, then the missing factor is going to be 3a cubed because I subtract the exponents and then this would be b to the first. All right, so that's my missing factor. Okay, let's go quickly to the back. Now at the back we're looking for the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor is easier to think about if you think about it like this. Especially if you have x's, that's actually easier, right? Which one's smaller, x to the fifth or x cubed? Well, x cubed is actually smaller, so my greatest common factor is the smallest one of the two, all right? And uh, another way to look at it is I can write this like that. All right, this, is, this right here is x to the fifth power. What do they have in common? Which one's the biggest one? Well, they have in common this, and that's the biggest common factor. All right, so that's the biggest common factor would be that. So when you see something like this, look at those two. Which one's bigger? I would say x squared is bigger. Sorry, which one's smaller? <laughs> All right, I would say that x squared is the smallest one. And then look at the y's. Which one's smaller between those two y's? It's y squared. So this is actually my greatest common factor. All right, now when it comes to actual numbers, and you have to break those apart into common factors. For example, I have 4 and 4, I know that. And this is 4 and 5. All right, so the numbers are actually more difficult because you have to look at them now. The greatest common factor is going to be determined by what do they have in common. Notice that they have a 4 in common. What else do they have in common? Well, nothing. All right, so on this one, the greatest common factor would be 4 and the smallest two of these m's, which in this case would be m squared. I know that this is not easy, so if you get to that point and you don't understand it, all right, for example, in 56, I'll do one more. I know this is 8 times 7. And 32 is 8 times 4. All right now, if you happen to have broken this down really far, like you wrote, well, this is 2 times 2 times 2, and this is same thing. Well, what do they have in common? Well, you even have two more here. What do they have in common? Well, I have three of those twos in common. So my common, my greatest common factor would be 8, which you can kind of see here anyway. Both of these have an 8. All right, you have an 8 in common, and now you're going to pick the smallest one of these letters. In this case, that would be C cubed. Actually, and that's it, because they don't even have anything else in common. All right, so that would be my greatest common factor. Well, I hope you did it all right. Have a good Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time.